Good morning, world. My name is Selma Edgar. Here we go, just getting set up here. My name is Selma Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. And, all right, my wonderful husband Norman is right here this morning. <laughs> He's helping me get set up here for the broadcast. Uh, probably a lot of you that are out there, good morning, welcome. I uh, have been listening to my husband, Norman. He's on every morning at 9 a.m. That is Central Standard Time in the United States. It's 0900 Military Time. Hello, Taylor. Welcome. Glad to have you listening in. Um, we are in the United States. Hello, Taylor. We're in the United States. I um, have a little map here that Norman made uh, showing where we are. That X there, we're just about in the middle of the country in the state of Missouri. Hello, welcome, Maddie. Um, we are Protestant Christian missionaries, and we have been married almost three years now. In one month, we will be celebrating our third wedding anniversary, and we're looking forward to that. Um, God has been so good to us. He brought us together at a time that was just a, a great surprise for us. And um, we, together, are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. And... Yes. Hello, Jonathan. Thank you for joining in. Yes, um, unfortunately, I have been divorced in the past. Uh, it was not something that I ever wanted to happen. Um, I was married for many, many years, and um, but in the end, my former husband, hi, my former husband was unfaithful. And um, the marriage just deteriorated and came to an end. I was then uh, single for 15 years before I met Norman. And so he's been, just been the greatest blessing in my life. And um, so together we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. What a... Sweet thing to say. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, we have a website. I want to show you how to become a Christian today.com. It's all one word. And on our website, we have over a hundred articles uh, about the gospel of Jesus Christ and also about our lives. And uh, thank you for those hearts. And I want to share something with you this morning. Um, at the end of my last broadcast, last Wednesday, I was talking about uh, one of the great joys to me was uh, finding out that Norman loves flowers as much as I do. I've always enjoyed flowers, and so now one of the things we most enjoy is going to the store in the springtime and picking out flowers, and Norman's made several flower beds out in our yard, and so it'll soon be springtime again here in Missouri, and we're looking forward to planting flowers again. But in addition to that, something that I wanted to share is... Uh, that Norman has also bought me a lot of bouquets in the three years that we've been married. And it's not, and it's really special what he does. Um, he doesn't just go to the store and, and buy a bouquet. He does it in a special way. And I want to show you one of the things and explain to you. Can you see this? This here, you see the elephant in here? This little elephant Norman got in when he was in Thailand. 
and he kept that all these years. And so the reason I'm showing this to you, you can see the, the dried flowers in this container. Norman always goes to the same florist when he wants to get me flowers, and there's a particular lady there that um, he always gets to make the bouquets. And what is so special is um, that he will take in either a pretty vase that he's bought or an object from our home and ask the florist to make a bouquet that will fit with that. And she's very, very gifted in making the bouquets. So he took this little elephant in one time and asked her to make a bouquet around that little elephant. And so this is, I have kept it for a long time. It also had some other live flowers in it. Hello, it looks like Sutton. Thank you so much for joining in. This um, container also had some live flowers in it, and of course they're, they're long gone now. But I wanted to keep it because that is so special. And um, on our website, if you're interested in looking, uh, one of the chapters is titled, is titled um, Photos. And uh, so we have taken pictures of all the bouquets that he has gotten for me. And uh, he's put them on the website. And so it's, you know, double pleasure for me if I want to remember all those beautiful flowers. Hi, thank you for joining in. Then I can go on there and just look at those flowers and remember what, and a lot of times he has brought those bouquets to me at work. I, uh, I work part-time now since we've been married. I work in an eye doctor's office. And so a lot of the times he has come up and just greatly surprised me with a beautiful bouquet at work. And then my whole office gets to enjoy them as well as me. So he's just very sweet and thoughtful doing things like that. And so I know that some of you out there listen to him broadcast. And uh, so I just want you to know a little bit more about what a wonderful husband he is. Um, and if you don't know, he is on every morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, Central Standard Time, 0900, um, every single day, and it's about prayer request. Yeah, if anyone has a prayer need, Selma, do you pray? Yes, certainly, I do pray. And um, do you have a prayer request? I would be happy to pray with anyone that uh, would like for me to, as well as Norman. And it's, um, you know, that's, yes, thank you for that comment. Hello, welcome. Glad you've joined in. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, married to Norman. And uh, we have our website. How to become a Christian today.com. We have over a hundred articles on there about the gospel of Jesus Christ as well as Norman's um, experiences as a missionary. Hi, welcome Ukraine. I'm so glad that you've joined in. Uh, we also are on. Um, oh, wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. It's just really incredible that we have in Crimea. Wonderful. Welcome. My name is Selma Etker. O-E-T-K-E-R is our last name. It's a German name and the O is silent. So it's pronounced Etker. My name is Selma and my husband is Norman. And um, we have been married for almost three years now, and we are sharing 
My name is Vlad Sherban. I hope I didn't butcher that name too bad. No, no, I'm not Turkish. Um, I have read um, in a magazine one time that the name Selma is an Arabic name. Um, I don't know where my mom heard it. It was just she heard it somewhere and she liked it. So she decided to name me Selma. And uh, so I, as a child, I didn't really care for my name because it was really different. And when, it, at least in the United States, when you're a child, you want to fit in and be like everybody else. Oh, there's many Selmas in Turkey. I didn't know that. Well, that's very interesting. So that's why you ask if I'm Turkish. So, but now I think it's really a pretty name. And um, so I appreciate my mom naming me that. So, again, we are we're on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. We're on our website as well as Periscope. And we just want the world to know about Jesus, that he is the only way of salvation. And I have a question for you. You, I'm, And I'm inviting you to ask me questions, too. That's the reason I'm here. Love to hear questions, anything that you would like to ask. And in the meantime, I'm going to ask you a question. I know that most people in the world think, that everyone is a child of God. Everyone has their own beliefs about everything. So my question is, do you believe that every person is a child of God? I have some um, scriptures that I will share with you. What the Protestant Christian Bible says about that hello welcome thank you for joining in so i would be interested okay are you saying yes you believe that everyone is a child of god well i thank you for responding to my question the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, is the only true divine revelation of God's Word. And I'm going to share with you, do I believe matrix? I don't know what that means. I don't know what matrix is. Can you, hello, welcome, looks like Skiller76, thank you for joining in, Matrix Philosophy. Um, well, I'm not familiar with that at all, So, I, but I can certainly say no, I don't believe in that. The only thing I believe in is the precious Word of God, the Holy Scriptures in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And... I'm going to read to you just a few scriptures here what the Bible says about whether or not everyone is a child of God. And in the book of St. John in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, in chapter 1, Hello, Sailor89, thank you for joining in. We're just having a little discussion here about whether everyone in the world is a child of God. My name is Selma Lee Do. God is a wonderful, loving God, and he is the healer. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. Again, this is talking about Jesus. And the world was made by him meaning that Jesus is the creator, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and that means the Jewish people, 
and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And in this verse, the word power is talking about authority. So it's saying that everyone who believed that Jesus was God and he came to deliver us from the power of sin to those who become spiritually born again those are the ones who are the children of God and I have another scripture on the same subject farther over this is in John chapter 3 the same book it says he that believeth on the Son, which is Jesus, the Son of God, has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It's only those who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and become spiritually born again that are the children of God. And I have one more scripture about that. I'm going to read and then we'll talk about it a little more. And this is in the book of Matthew, chapter 12. And again, it's about Jesus. It says, Someone came to him and said, Behold, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So in other words, Jesus was saying the people that are a part of the family of God are the ones who do the will of God. And do you know what the will of God is? The will of God is that everyone will believe in Jesus and become spiritually born again and serve him and live for him. And there's only one way to do that. Let me get a sip of water here. There's three things. And you can hear my husband, Norman. He talks about this every day on his broadcast, which is at 9 o'clock, the 0900 prayer request time. And our message together as Protestant Christian missionaries is to tell the world about Jesus, the only way of salvation, the only way to be spiritually born again, the only pathway, regardless of all the hundreds or thousands of beliefs in the world, the hundreds and thousands of different gods that people worship and they can do absolutely nothing for you jesus is the only way and god does not want anyone to go to hell god loves everyone and he i just like to picture god as if he's reaching his arms out his arms of love just like you would reach out your arms to someone that you love and you would wrap your arms around them. God is reaching out to you and he's saying, come, come to me, come to me. And God knows those. He can see what's in your heart and he knows who is sincere. He knows if you really want to know him and if you're sincere, his grace, God's grace, is his love for you, his favor, his power to help you understand who he is and who Jesus is 
Jesus is the divine Son of God. He came to earth. He was born as a baby to his mother Mary, who was a virgin. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. And then he grew up and lived a sinless life here on the earth. And his purpose for coming was to take upon himself the wrath of God for all the sins of the world. Jesus willingly went to the cross. He suffered great, great agony. And he died taking the sins of the whole world upon himself to satisfy the anger of God so that we no longer have to suffer the punishment of going to hell if we believe in Jesus. Jesus' death and his resurrection and his ascension back to heaven has made a way for everyone who will believe in him to be set free from the condemnation of sin and, and death and ending up in hell. So if you understand about God's grace and about Jesus, what he did is to justify us. I have heard the word justification explained as meaning just as if I had never sinned. And that is the way God sees a person when they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The blood of Jesus, that precious atoning blood of Jesus, washes away the sins of our life when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And the third step in that process is repentance. When you understand what Jesus has done and that God's grace is there for you, then you have to repent. And that is a word that so many people do not understand what it really means. The word repent means to turn around. You were going one direction in your life. You were going your own way. You were living your life the way you wanted to live, doing what you please, thinking that you're your own boss and that you know what you want and you know what's best for you. And you want to live your life just any old way. To repent means you turn completely around and you go in the opposite direction. And that is to live for the Lord by obeying the teachings of Jesus and his apostles and the evangelists. And they are all written in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. So to be spiritually born again... You have to understand about God's grace and that he loves you and he wants you to come to him and that through faith in Jesus, you will be justified. But you can't stop there. You can't just say, well, I believe in what Jesus did for me because that's what so many, so many, 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 many countless people do. They just say, oh, I believe in Jesus, and that's the end of it. But it can't be the end. To be spiritually born again, you have to truly surrender your heart and your life and your will to God. It's not just having head knowledge about Jesus, but it has to be a surrender of your heart, saying, God, I'm so sorry for going my own way, and now I want to live for you. And I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. 
and I will live by your holy word. I will live for you, God, and I will be obedient to your word. That is being spiritually born again. And you know what is amazing? When you make that decision, the Holy Spirit of God comes into you, and there is an inward transformation that's supernatural. It's totally supernatural. And God changes your heart and your desires. And there's a joy there that comes from no other place. And then you want to please God. When you have been born again, you want to please God. Your life is just totally changed. And it's a wonderful thing. And when that happens, then you can be assured that you will go to heaven when you die. It says in, again, in the Protestant Christian Bible, in the book of Romans, I'm going to read you this one scripture. Let's see. It says, this is in the book of Romans chapter 6. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, that's the gift from God when we are spiritually born again. We have that precious gift of eternal life, knowing that we will forever live with the Lord. The opposite of that is, says the wages of sin is death. And that word death there is talking about living eternally in hell. It's spiritual death. When you die physically, then you will end up in hell. And that's a horrible, horrible place. And just as God loves you, Norman and I love you too. We don't want anyone to go to hell. The Bible says God is not willing that anyone should perish. But it is your own choice so I've heard so many people say oh God is a loving God he wouldn't send anybody to hell well in a way that is true because everyone has to make that own their own personal choice you can choose to go to heaven or you can choose to go to hell and Another scripture the Bible says in Galatians, it says the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin. So until you are spiritually born again, you are a prisoner of sin. And Jesus, Jesus has already died on the cross to set you free. And so that's why we're here, is to tell you that you are free. And so many people don't know that. And that freedom comes through believing this gospel message. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share an analogy here, something I thought about this. In the natural world, people can choose to obey man's laws. And when you obey the law, then you're free. But if you choose to break the law, and whatever that might be, if you murder, if you steal something, whatever, if you break the law and you get caught, you're going to go to jail. And in a sense, then you can say, your punishment of going to jail was self-inflicted.
because you made that choice to break the law. And so it is spiritually in the same way. If you choose to reject Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do you know that is the only sin that will send you to hell? It doesn't matter what you do in your life. God will forgive you if you turn to him and truly repent and become spiritually born again. He will forgive you. Don't ever think that you've done anything so bad that God wouldn't forgive you. He is a loving God and he will forgive anything and everything you've done if you truly repent. If you don't repent, if you reject Jesus until the until you die, then your punishment is eternity in hell and you have inflicted that punishment on yourself by rejecting Jesus. On the other hand, you can choose to obey God by repenting, by understanding this gospel message and then making that choice to turn to Jesus, to ask forgiveness, to repent, and then to obey his teachings in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And when you do that, then you are set free from sin and the punishment in hell. So, God is just waiting and hoping that more and more people will turn to him. So, again, I'm going to share with you um, where you can learn more about the gospel message, learn more about the Bible, learn more about us if you're interested. That is Norman and I as Protestant Christian missionaries. We, um, we are on WordPress. Um, again, our, our website, I'll show you how to become a Christian today.com. It's all one word. And, of course, we're on Periscope because you're watching us. We're on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Flickr, VK. Norma's made a list for me of all the social media that we're on. Google Plus. And um, Norman has made 40 videos with all the commands of Jesus just sets it all out what God expects from his followers and we have um, I have written many articles and recorded a lot of them in videos um, one of the chapters on our website how to become a Christian today.com Norman has named one of the chapters Selma's pulpit and you can read the articles that I have written and or you can go on YouTube and you can listen to the videos that he and I have made. There's just um, hundreds of different messages that you can listen to us, listen about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not... It's not uh, so much that we want you to know about us, but we want you to know about Jesus and the way of salvation. Everyone in the world can, if they want, choose to leave, to lead a good moral life. And not do wicked things. Of course, we know that a lot of people do very wicked things.
But even if you if you don't, you can live a good, decent life, never commit any crimes, and still go to hell. Isn't that a terrible thought? But you do you know why that is? It's because of original sin. And the Bible, the Protestant Christian Bible, it's our English Bible of today. In the book of Genesis, it's the very first book. It's the only divinely inspired word of God. And it tells, in the beginning, God created the world. And everything he made was good. It was a beautiful world. And he created Adam and Eve, the first people in the Garden of Eden. And... They could have lived forever, a perfect, sinless life, never died. But God gave them just one rule, one command. He said, don't eat the fruit of a certain tree in the garden. And he had provided everything for them. But eventually... We don't know how long, how much time passed, but eventually they disobeyed God and they ate that fruit. And so th that was the first sin that was ever committed because they disobeyed God. It's called original sin because it was the first sin. And because of them, because of their disobedience, when their children were born, they were born with a sin nature. And ever since then, every single person that is born is born in sin. We are born with that sin nature that was passed from the very beginning. But God, being such a loving and just God, promised right there in that first book of the Bible that one day he would send someone to destroy the power of evil. And that evil, Satan, Satan is the father of all evil. And God promised that one day someone would crush Satan's power. And that someone is Jesus. Only Jesus can set us free from that sin. And the most wonderful thing, as I said a while ago, no matter what a person has done, when they repent, when they truly repent and become spiritually born again, God forgives you no matter what your life has been like in the past. And God never brings it up to you again. The Bible says... Your sins go into the sea of forgetfulness. God looks at each one then that is spiritually born again. He looks at you as a holy person that has never sinned. And that is because of the precious blood of Jesus. His atoning blood. When he died on the cross, he was that perfect sacrifice that God the Father required. And that precious blood atone for our sins. And now we are free. We're free from sin. We're free from condemnation. We're free from the guilt of things we might have done in the past. We're free from that horrible prospect of ending up in hell. So many people do not believe hell is real because they don't want to believe it. Most people will choose to believe that heaven is real because it sounds wonderful and they think, most people think, well, I'm a good person. I'll get to go to heaven. Or a lot of people think, well, I'm going to do a lot of good things in my life and then God will accept me into heaven because I've done so many good, I've done more good things than I did bad. So surely God will let me into heaven. But it doesn't work that way. You can never, 
forever. You could spend every day of your whole life for 80 or 90 years, however long you live, being a good person and doing good things for other people. But that is not a passport into heaven. God's requirement is faith in Jesus Christ and repentance, living for God. It says in the book of Proverbs in the Protestant Christian Bible, the whole duty of man is to love God and obey his commandments. That is, that is God's requirement to get to go to heaven. Don't you think that's worth it? Don't you think giving up your life of struggle, your life of trying to feel satisfied on the inside. You know, people try everything in the world to try to feel satisfied on the inside. And do you know why that is? It's because God has put a void in us, wanting us to seek after him. He put that void there because he is the only one that can fill it up. People try so many ways. They try sex. They try drugs. They try alcohol. They try living for entertainment, for sports, for their pets, or just working 100 hours a week trying to climb the corporate ladder thinking that's going to make them feel satisfied trying to get rich so many things people do and it's just like running on a treadmill it's kind of pointless you you're never going to be satisfied until you turn to Jesus and believe that he is the only way to heaven and repent and serve him, obey him. And the rewards are great. It doesn't mean you're going to have a, a perfect, easy, bed of roses life. You're still going to have struggles, and trials, and difficulties. But the great thing is that God is always there when you are spiritually born again. He will help you in the difficult times. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I know that for a fact. God has proven that to me through difficult times. Earlier, um, someone asked me a question, do I believe God heals? And so I'm, I will tell you about one time God healed me. Um, when I quoted the scripture, of God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It reminded me of the one time wonderful thing God did for me. I had... Um, I had had carpal tunnel surgery on my wrist, and the surgery was unsuccessful. It, it did not help me at all. It actually made things worse. And um, so I actually I had to quit working the job I was doing because of the pain in my wrist. Well, then uh, a few years later, I started a new job, and... Uh, I was answering the phone a lot, so it was that repetitive motion with my wrist, and the, so the pain started really getting severe again. And so, um, and this was after I was divorced. I, as someone had asked me earlier if I've been divorced, and yes, I was. And so I was working to support myself, and so I was having this problem with the pain. And so one morning, as I was driving to work, um, you know, I had been praying, asking God to help me. 
with, with the pain. And the Holy Spirit of God reminded me of the scripture, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And when that scripture came into my mind, I just felt the peace of God. And I knew he was with me. And do you know that day I worked? I worked all day. And it wasn't until the day was over, I realized I had no pain in my wrist. God healed my wrist. And I never had that problem again. So yes, I certainly believe in God's healing power. He's a wonderful, wonderful God. So I, my hope and desire along with Norman's is that many of you listening will really think about this gospel message and that you might decide to turn to God and repent and to live for him. All right. That is it for today. It's been a joy sharing with you. I will be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And I hope that um, some of you who are listening today might come back. And I would love for you to ask me any questions that you might have. So I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>